It's July 11th, 2006. On a cool, calm evening in Lausanne, Switzerland, one of the greatest 200-meter races of all time took place. And in a truly shocking development, one special sprinter ran a time so fast that it would stand unchallenged for years. What made this race so incredible was not just the winning time, but it was also the super stacked field that was assembled on this special day. In lane two, you had LaShawn Merritt, lane five was Tyson Gay, lane seven was Wallace Spearman, and in lane eight, you had the promising young talent, Xavier Carter. All of these sprinters had run very impressive times building up to this one special moment. However, in lane six, the 19-year-old phenom Usain Bolt was ready for battle. And even though he was still just a teenager, he had already run some of the fastest times in history. Just two years before this race, he became the youngest athlete to ever run under 20 seconds for the 200, running a stunning time of 19.93 seconds at just 17 years of age. Indeed, Bolt was a huge threat over this distance, but given the talent in the field, anything could happen. And when I say anything, I mean anything. Näin ponkaisevat miehet takakaarteesta liikkeelle ja hyvin lähtee sieltä heti Usain Bolt. Pitkä mies tulee, tällä hetkellä Rautla 5 tulee juonta paikalla, tulee voimakkaasti! Alright, let's pause this race for a few seconds. Over the first 100 meters, Tyson Gay from the United States had completely buried the field. And at the halfway point, he's probably about 3 to 5 meters ahead of anyone else. But close behind is the ever dangerous Usain Bolt. Given what you know now about sprinting, take a guess at what will happen over this final 100 meters. Get ready to have your mind blown. From lane 8, Xavier Carter somehow managed to win this race with a ridiculous time of 19.63 seconds. Back in 2006, this was the second fastest time ever run over this distance, only falling short of Michael Johnson's incredible world record from the 1996 Olympics. This was a stunning upset, not just because he beat Tyson Gay and Usain Bolt, but because at the young age of 20, Xavier Carter had now become the second fastest 200 meter runner of all time. This race was clearly one of the greatest moments in 200 meter racing, but there's actually much more to this race than meets the eye. At the 100 meter mark, Carter had split a time of 10.36 seconds, which was a solid split, but it fell way short of Tyson Gay, who split a time of 10.13 seconds. This opening 100 meters was certainly quick, but for his final 100 meters, Carter ran a time of 9.27 seconds, which, incredibly, is the exact same closing time as Usain Bolt's world record that he ran just three years after this race. Just think about how fast this actually is. For Bolt's world record, he was so far ahead of everyone else that they were practically out of camera shot. But for this race, Carter accelerated so quickly over the closing stages that it really did look like he came out of nowhere to win this race. To this day, I'm still in shock almost every time I watch this race. With about 50 meters remaining, it really did look as though Carter somehow just shifted gears and left everyone else in his dust. Obviously, this 200 meter race was an amazing showcase of incredible sprinting ability, but what exactly did this race mean back in 2006, and what exactly happened after this performance? First, there's Usain Bolt. This was actually his fastest 200 meter time of 2006, but over the next three years, he rapidly rose to be the undisputed greatest sprinter of all time. Over these three seasons, he broke the world records in both the 100 and the 200 meters. But there's actually one very interesting piece to Bolt's story that is often overlooked, and it involves this exact same race just two years later. In 2008, just one week after breaking both the 100 and the 200 meter world records in the 2008 Olympics, he once again returned to the track in Lausanne to see just how fast he could run the 200 meters. 
As you can clearly see, Bolt was now a completely different athlete from what he was back in 2006, and even though he was way ahead of the previous meet record of Xavier Carter from two years earlier, he slowed down significantly over the final 50 meters, ultimately finishing this race in the exact same time as Carter's previous meet record. Indeed, this drastic slowdown over the closing stages of the race was intentional. However, he still crushed the field by an enormous margin, and his time was the exact same time as Carter's meet record. It would only take Bolt one more year to take down this record officially, as he once again returned to this exact same event in 2009. Despite the cold and rainy conditions, it was clear that he was looking to run fast, and in a clear attempt to take down the meeting record, he improved on Carter's previous time by four one hundredths of a second. I like to think that for this race, he was remembering what happened just three years earlier, and in racing against the shadow of Xavier Carter, he made sure that he ran under 19.6. Indeed, Bolt went on to win a massive amount of global titles after this race, and while others in the field also had amazing careers after 2006, the same, unfortunately, cannot be said about Xavier Carter. From 2006 through 2007, Carter cemented himself as one of the greatest 200-meter runners in the world. In fact, in 2007, he once again defeated Usain Bolt in a 200-meter race in Zurich, where he ran a very impressive time of 19.92 seconds. With so much talent and such a rapid rise to the top, many saw this young athlete as one of the future stars in sprinting. However, during his build-up to the 2008 Olympics, he sustained an unfortunate leg injury, and after this rather tragic event, he was never quite the same athlete ever again. For the next few seasons, he continued racing on the track, but he was never able to run under 20 seconds for the 200 meters ever again. Looking back at this one race, it was a turning point for many athletes. Out of the eight runners in this field, four of them ran new personal bests, but out of all of these world-class runners, Xavier Carter had done something truly amazing. In addition to running the second fastest time in history, he had also run a 9.27 for his closing 100 meters. Based on this one moment, the future for Xavier Carter was almost limitless. But unlike the other competitors in this field, he was never quite able to reach his true potential. Since this race over 14 years ago, only seven athletes have ever run faster. But out of all of the 200 meter races ever, Xavier Carter's final 50 meters in this race just might be the fastest of all time. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, until next time.